who's the locker room DJ before games? Who do you think the locker room DJ is? Like, I'm Al- curious. Alyssa there. Nope. <laughs> Again, last person I would pick that. But um, it's Pino. Shocker. It's Rog. And I'm joined by the magic of modern technology to someone half a planet away in New Zealand, a coffee foam smiley face connoisseur, Fortnite expert, <laughs> and one of the most exclamation point footballers on your defending champion US women's national team, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Welcome back for Direct from Down Under, presented by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy from your Washington spirit. It's Trinity Rodman. <laughs> What is up, Raj? Trinity, it's so bloody good to see you because we talked in September. A fascinating conversation. Your career history, your first steps into the pro game, your relentless pursuit of improvement really stuck with me. The whole conversation. I encourage listeners, go back and listen. Be like Trinity, not like Raj. But at the end, you talk with real emotion about one of your biggest goals in your life, which was to be on the US roster for the World Cup. Well, here you are. You're yep. in New Zealand with the team. How Are you pinching yourself? Are you savouring it? How would you describe the Trinity Rodman mindset, the emotional state? Uh, I get this question a lot. I don't know. What, like, my head's scrambled all the time. Um, and again, I like keep saying, like, I don't feel like it's really set in. And I don't think it will until, like, our very first game or even, like, the time that I step on the field but I don't know from the call to like arriving to being with the team to trainings like everything's been so amazing and like I've learned and grown so much in a short time and it's just go 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 so I don't know your call was amazing Trinity because there was a lot of understandable emotions tears relief just wanted to call you and uh, let you know that we selected you for the world cup roster Thank you so much. For a minute, you were there. Then it's like a switch just flipped, and you were like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. Thank you so much, Waka. This means the world. I can't even explain it. But yeah, I'm locked in. I'm ready to go, and I'm just looking forward. I said this before, but I feel like it was like the littlest amount of relief. But immediately my head clicked, and I was like, relieved like this is like step one like I shouldn't be relieved or I shouldn't be comfortable yet like it's not until we get into the games and I I make a difference or I do something is when I can feel accomplished or relieved or happy at that point I feel like and and your squad ranges from 38 to 18 there's mothers with kids and there's players (laughs) who were so recently high school kids in their own right what 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 is the group dynamic like? Do you mostly hang out with those of your own age, or is it all just one big happy family? Yeah, it's so weird because you would think that it'd be very like separate, older players, middle aged players, and then like the younger players. But it's really not. I feel like this team is so unique, and I've it's taken me a while to get like comfortable. But I feel like since we've been here, it's been kind of a bubble, and it's been very much us and us and nobody else and i think it's been amazing to build those relationships and build those bonds um but i think our relationships with the older players are it's so good and i always say like big sis little sis because i don't feel like it's like a mom daughter thing like i feel like it's almost like we're all sisters and we bond in so many different ways like in a surprising way but I find myself having conversations with like every single person on the team so easily all the time and, and we goof off and it's it's awesome. I mean, what, what, what's the best piece of advice a veteran's given you? Something that's really stuck in your mind as you begin this, this remarkable journey. Failure isn't a setback. Like failure is always part of your journey to succeed and to be the best of the best, you have to fail. And then another one would Who be Who gave just, you that one? Um, Pino and Kelly, both of them kind of said the same thing in different ways. Um, and then same for not straying away from who you are. There's tactics, there's game plans, there's principles, but you're here for a reason. You're here for your talent and you have to utilize it. I I know you're a massive gamer, someone who packs a PlayStation on the road. Who on the US squad (laughs) gives you a run for your money? Honestly, no one. I knew you were going to (laughs) say that. (laughs) Um... Actually, Lindsay just came up to me the other day and told me that she got, I don't know if it was an Xbox, but 
she just started playing Fortnite and she says she's obsessed with it now. And I was like, now you understand. Like people wouldn't think that you could get into it. But as soon as you play and get like a, a little bit good at it, it's like, okay, let's play again. Let's play again. Let's play again. So there's nobody on your level, like just no one even close to the, the Rodman abilities. I would say no. And my brother's like a really big gamer. And I feel like growing up with him, I kind of like always wanted to be on the PlayStation, like playing with him. So that also helped. So So I would say I'm the best. I'm gonna keep that title. Are you just killing the hours filming a massive archive of TikTok dances with Sonic? (laughs) Yeah, I have a lot of saved TikTok dances. It's just finding the time to do them. Me and Alyssa Thompson have talked about I don't know why I said Thompson as if Alyssa Nair would do a TikTok with me. But yeah, I'm trying to get Alex to do one and I'm going to figure out an easy enough dance for her to do and that she's not overwhelmed. But um, hopefully in coming TikToks. You are one of 14 players for whom this is the first World Cup. Does it feel like a journey into the unknown for you? Kind of daunting at all or are you just like are you, you've got the confidence levels of Zlatan are you like World Cup meet Trinity Rodman <laughs> oh gosh um yeah I feel like people think that I'm like don't carry nerves and I just like I'm kind of doing it no I'm I'm nervous I'm anxious <laughs> I'm scared all the time but I think knowing that I have such a great team that's behind me like it's not I've never gone on the field with this team and been like, they don't trust me or they, I'm not experienced enough to be here. I know that they support me and I know that every decision I make that they're going to either coach me through it or, I mean, celebrate with me. So for me, knowing that has helped through. But um, obviously there's nerves like you don't really know what to expect until you're in it. Like nothing can prepare you. No, like no matter how much the veterans have told me, like you don't know until you know. Talking about this squad, hard hitting, important question. Alex Morgan shared a Spotify playlist on Instagram. She is heavy on the T-Swift. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I want to know, first of all, who's the locker room DJ before games? Who do you think the locker room DJ is? Like, I'm a, curious. A listener. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Again, last person I would pick that. But um, it's Pino. It is Shocker. Pino. Yeah. Um, she's good at it. Um, but is. yeah, Alex what? is definitely loves her taylor swift and us youngins i feel like are on the opposite not that we dislike it but we're definitely not as into taylor swift as she is what's the song of the summer in that locker we've been just playing a lot of throwbacks like yesterday in the locker or in the gym we were playing like disney channel throwbacks like it was weird like that doesn't normally happen but we've been like listening to old stuff which has been really funny and rose has every disney song memorized to like movements to dances in the shows like it's crazy on your debut for your club team the washington spirit i remember watching you know you came on and we all held our breath and it took it took forever took an entire five minutes yeah that was uh, crazy entire five minutes before (laughs) you found the back of the net you've honestly never looked back you won rookie of the year the championship do you approach u.s games differently than you would with the spirit when you pull on that u.s uniform does it hit different i think obviously it's a way bigger stage um and just i don't know if expectations is the right word but i think the standard is so high here unlike anywhere else and i don't think i play differently i think i'm a little bit more timid and i think it's gotten better as i've played more but i like here you don't want to mess up like at your clubs like you have a standard but it's like if you mess up it's fine like whatever but i think here it's like i I don't want to mess up like this needs to be perfect and like it can't be reactive it needs to be embedded into your brain like this is where i need to be this is my role but also this is their role their role their role like you need to know everything and i think that is difficult it's just like embedding in your brain exactly where you need to be set plays um positioning attacking like everything but also having that creativity and not becoming robotic You've said recently that you've watched an awful lot of your dad's NBA games. Your dad, Dennis Rodman, five-time NBA champion. And you've realized that an important part of your game is like his relentlessness rebounding. Your words, you said you've realized you hunt in front of goal. Uh, Can you walk us through that? How does the machinations of an elite basketball player show up on the flank for a World Cup footballer? I think... No matter what, with my dad, 
you knew that no one was going to beat him to a rebound. And it's like rebounds aren't three-pointers. They're not dunks. They're not crazy, showy things that win games. But at the same time, it is what win ga- wins games. It is the glue to a team. Like his rebounding and keeping possession or like putting it back up for a foul or points like helped his teams so much. And it's like I always like to use the word for him. And, and I think my brother plays similarly in the sense of like the glue guy like he wasn't the guy like trying to do too much he was the guy that was never going to let somebody beat him to the spot he was the guy that was going to jump into the stands and try to get the ball even though he knew it was out like the amount of times that he tried to get a ball when clearly it was out of bounds like he never gave up and I think that will always stay stick with me and what people don't realize is in this environment mindset is almost stronger than physicality like there's your skill set there's physical whatever but I think mentally being locked in all the time not turning off is the most important part to a winning team there is so much attacking talent on this United States women's national team squad what do you feel you add that's different to all the other options I mean I love our front line like we're sick but um I think just creativity, the unknown of what I'm going to do, because I think I do bring a lot. Like, I don't think it's just like, oh, she's fast, she can run. I think there's so much more. And for players playing against me to not know if I'm going to back heel, flick inside, combine, dribble, cross, shoot. Like, I feel like the unpredictable part of my game is so off-putting for other teams. Um, and obviously... Um, strong to have on a team so yeah I'm happy that I can bring that there's there's something you've said about your creativity and I love it you said what makes me me is my creativity whomever I play against doesn't really know what they're going to get each game which is a strength and I'm curious Trinity do you yourself know what's going to happen are you plotting (laughs) and planning these tricks or or are you as surprised as the defender no I shock myself all the time um, and then when it works out, it's awesome. Like, even on the goal against England at Wembley, the one that got called back that I had. Help is coming. Smith trying to tuck it in. It's flicked there. Ronda, goal! 2-2! Two, two. I didn't know that I was going to dummy it to Soph. Like, I was running over to get it, and then I was like, let's see if this gets through. So then I opened my legs, and it was a perfect through one of Soph. So I was like, keep going so I think it's just like trying new things is so important like just trying it because the worst thing that happens is we lose it but at least we're in the attacking third and we can get it back so I think that's also awesome about being a forward is that it's not as detrimental (laughs) as being a center back even though your career is is still young your goal celebrations they are the stuff of legend from the arm flex the choreographed dances the poor moves do you have anything planned, pre-planned? Oh, Do you have anything no. at all? Have you given that en- any, any, any thought at all for all this? No, and like all the celebrations I've had before are unplanned. Like the one I had with Ash and on WSL, like that was unplanned, but somehow we did it at the same time. Like it didn't make sense. What? And then me you just swimming on mind the floor. Melded. Yes. Genuinely. And, no, genuinely. Like promise you it was the weirdest thing. And then the handshake we had, unplanned. The swimming, I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> like, literally no idea. So I will be as surprised as everybody else if when I score, just stay tuned because I will also be watching and waiting for the celebration. Can you talk about what the U.S. gets in terms of the difference between Trinity Rodman starting and Trinity Rodman plays an impact sub? How do you think about it? Yeah, I think there's a difference in, like, starting and not. Um Obviously, when you're on the bench, you get to see everything play out and you kind of, I don't want to say like have an advantage, but like you have those fresh legs, you have the tactics that you watch at halftime, you have those conversations with people that were in the game. So I think obviously you have that to go off of, but so I would definitely say game changer when I come on, like a difference maker. And I think energy overall, like even if I'm not getting goals or assists, like I will bring the energy, I'll bring the legs. Um... And I think starting, it's just being consistent and being turned on, um, but still being dangerous. I think, obviously, it's a little bit 
I don't want to say relaxed in the first half. Like, we want to start strong every single time. Like, that's our thing. Like, we want to get a goal as quickly as possible. But at the same time, it's kind of like reading the game and trying to figure out what works in the first half. Trinity, you said that this camp, this experience, this journey is all about focus, that you cannot turn it off for a second. How do you prepare your mind to be creative ahead of all that's to come in these games? Is it a blank slate in there? Are you a Zen master embrace uh, of what's to come? Or or do you visualise, do you let yourself imagine what you want to have happen in the high-pressure situations that lie ahead? Well, I'm definitely not Zen. <laughs> I gotta work on that. Um, I feel like my brain is just like all the time. But I don't know. I almost feel like it's the opposite. Like I feel like the more I think, the more I don't play like myself. It's weird. Like I feel like the more expectations I put on myself, the more I want to do in the game, the less I do. So I think going into the game, knowing what needs to happen, what I need to do, and then being me like I think the best thing is when I'm completely like free-minded and just going Trinity to to a bit of to a lot of discipline and a tiny bit of chaos please God but I want to raise my Bud Light and toast to you you really are a singular tenacious intelligent human one who's worked so bloody hard to be where you are in this moment to you your family and to experiencing all you deserve to come. Honestly, blessed to be represented by someone as candid and as, frankly, terrifyingly talented as you are. (laughs) Godspeed. I wish I had one. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Courage. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods. But first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. That's why